The Mim's Beginning is a godlike strategy game that has been available on Steam for a little while now and released on the Nintendo Switch eShop last week. Putting you in charge of the titular Mim's characters after their ship is destroyed by a meteorite, you must direct them to build the necessary resources and become self-sustainable. Is this one worth picking up? I'm going for Switch Up. Thank you to the developers for the review copy. And now, let's find out. Become the owner of magnificent flying islands. Experience an exciting sci-fi. Gameplay wise, the main bulk of the game is the story mode. This will teach you the basics before each chapter has a set of objectives for you to complete. Do just that and you will move on to the next challenge. Now let's have a look at some of the basics. Upon being given control over proceedings, your first order of business is to build a PSI tower. This will grant you power over the Mims and will see you become the omnipotent ruler of the land. Next up, you must give your Mims a way of producing a source of currency and energy, and this is achieved by growing certain fruits, which can then be converted into biomass. You must build silos to store the fruits in, and an extractor that will carry out the conversion process. You will also need to create electricity to run all of your buildings, and early on, you will be able to build wind turbines to assist you with this. The force and direction of the wind on each level can be monitored. The production of biomass will allow you to build further buildings, but it is not the only form of currency as you also have gems. Gems can be found within rocks on the land, but the more productive way to earn them is to research and create animals, which you can then sell, although to do this you must first build yourself a biolab. From here you can research and create various animals as mentioned, and you can then sell them at a space market, although you will need to build a space port in order to transport the animals there first. It's important that you use your gems wisely, as if you squander them, you may not be able to meet the level's objectives. For example, making sure you have enough silos to meet the required level of biomass. The aforementioned method of gathering new gems will help with this, but careful planning can alleviate this problem further still. Making things more difficult are the local wildlife that will attempt to eat your fruit, meaning that you will not be able to convert it into biomass. The extent to which this wildlife is attracted to your camp is determined by how strong the fragrance of your fruit is, and again, this can be monitored within the menu screens. Obviously, the influx of creatures eating your source of fuel, or more powerful ones looking to attack you, is a problem, and to assist you with this, you have the PSI powers. These powers will unlock as you play, and work via a cooldown system. Early powers include a blast of fire and a seismic burst of energy, both of which can be used to kill the aforementioned enemies, but also have other uses, such as burning down trees in order to make space to build, and breaking rocks to try and find gems, as was mentioned earlier. As well as these more offensive powers, you are also able to rejuvenate your Mims. This will give them a boost to morale, which will begin to drop noticeably, and this is shown via the sad face above their heads. If morale does drop, the Mims will be much slower, which will of course affect the production of buildings and planting of crops. A more effective method of increasing happiness is to build houses for the Mims, who will retreat to them when they are tired. A little further into the game, you will unlock a science lab, and from here you can teach your Mims new skills, as well as unlocking new technologies such as the ability to predict the near future shown as a bar at the bottom of the screen. This will then see the introduction of natural disasters, such as earthquakes, as a gameplay mechanic. Control-wise, each area, such as buildings, fruits, PSI powers, and farming, have their own tabs at the edges of the screen, and these can be expanded by pressing each respective one. The icons within these are picture-based, although hovering over a picture will give you a written description of what it is you are looking at. Holding down the X button and using the D-pad will allow you to choose a specific MIM to direct and you can then send them to a specific location directly. It's a bit fiddly in all honesty and it could have been made a lot easier to control groups of MIMs at a time. Although there are prompts in the early game and a prologue that serves as a tutorial, plus an objective screen that can be accessed, things still felt a little too vague at times. Having built a home for my Mims, they were still unhappy often, and I needed to constantly use the PSI Rejuvenator, more than I felt I should have had to. But there seemed no real other way to keep them happy, meaning the constant use of that particular power became a little tedious. Loading the transporter when selling animals also seems needlessly convoluted, and whilst the game does explain how to do it, it's easy to forget how to early on. The first time I did this out of the tutorial, I didn't know whether the animals were loaded or not, and in the end I located them and discovered that seemingly one had become stuck behind a tree, and therefore had not eaten enough fruit to grow to the required size to be transported. This seemed to happen a few more times, and even with full speed on, getting them to grow took ages as a result. Needless to say, this became very tedious very quickly. 
There are other irritations as well, such as the Mim's insistence on walking towards an enemy just as you are about to blast it, and thus getting caught in the blast radius, or the enemy standing right next to your animals so you can't blast them at all. These annoyances did happen a little too often. Moving the camera around the island is handled with the right stick, with movement of the cursor within the current parameters of the screen handled with the left stick. ZL and ZR will move the camera in and out, and L and R rotate the camera. Camera rotation though is handled in quite an odd way. Rather than the camera turn on the spot to however many degrees depending on how long you hold the button for, instead the camera stays rooted to the bottom of the screen and merely tilts at times instead. The issue with this is that you can't really see all angles of the screen as you need to. Here for example, something is blocking me from laying a bio lab down and I just want to rotate the camera 90 degrees to see what it is. Instead though the whole screen tilts and moves my cursor away from the area I was looking at. In the end I managed to lay it through sheer persistence, not through the game assisting me as it should. As is generally the case with God Sim games, you can speed up the passage of time as mentioned earlier, and you can do this either by pressing the indicators at the top of the screen, or by pressing the plus button. But again, if you are anything like me, you will press this button countless times meaning to pause the game instead. Pause is actually assigned to the minus button. As well as the story mode, there is also a survival mode to attempt, and to be fair, this has a host of options allowing you to cater the experience very much to your liking. You can choose a difficulty setting should you wish, but otherwise you can choose how many gems you begin with, the number of mims, even the intensity of enemies or natural disasters, as well as which enemies turn up. There are certainly some good ideas in the mims, and it's clear that a lot of effort went into it for all its flaws. Gameplay starts out fairly promisingly, but there are just one too many flaws for it to not start to grate after a little while, and scores 13 out of 20. Controls are almost there, but the camera is way too fiddly and spoils things to a degree, and scores 12 out of 20. Visually, the MIMS is quite a bland experience, unfortunately. Nothing looks particularly impressive, and some of the character models and assets would not have looked out of place on a much older console. Cutscenes are told with minimal animation and no voice acting. I was expecting there to be a gibberish voice that you sometimes find in sim games, and to have nothing at all is a little disappointing. Coupled with the limited animation, it really does restrict how much you attach to and therefore care about the Mim's characters. The one saving grace is the occasional comedic tone of the writing, which does alleviate this problem to an extent, but it does still feel like a missed opportunity. There are also occasional grammatical errors in the writing too, which is something that always disappoints me. Strangely, the tutorial also makes reference to using a mouse, which I assume is an oversight from the other version of the game, but again, it doesn't really give the best impression. In terms of the music, you will hear the same theme throughout the levels, and whilst it isn't bad, it does become repetitive. Although at other times, such as during this cutscene, the music is actually quite impressive. On the whole, I think it's safe to say that the game's strong point certainly does not lie in its visuals, and they score 8 out of 20. Audio doesn't fare much better, I'm afraid, and scores 11 out of 20. The Mim's beginning costs £7.19, $8.99, or €8.99, and this is where the developers deserve major credit. With a story mode and a survival mode that offers a good amount of replayability, gameplay that is fun, albeit flawed, and a level of polish that is not as high as some would expect or like, they have priced the game accordingly. Were it even a couple of pound more, I wouldn't be able to recommend it at all. At this price point, it has at least given itself a lifeline for an impulse buy for those who are fans of the genre and willing to overlook a few wrinkles, and value scores 16 out of 20. To conclude, The Mim's Beginning is a decent game. It includes a lot of the features you would expect from the genre, introduces them slowly and steadily, and has a good level of depth to it too. It knows what it is, and has a price point to justify this. However, it also has a few gameplay mechanics that evoke tedium and mild frustration, and visuals that are incredibly outdated. If you like God Sims, you could do a lot worse at this price point, but to feel this way you will need to be quite forgiving of a few flaws. If you can do this, then perhaps you are the merciful leader the Mims have been waiting for. The Mims beginning gets a switch up score of 60%.
Many thanks as always for watching. I hope you enjoyed this review. Please do remember to leave a like if you did. I've got a terrible ear infection at the minute, so apologies if there's anything wrong with the sound. I can't actually hear my own voice very well, so I hope it's okay. A quick thank you to our Patreons as always for your continued support and to each and every one of you for watching our videos. Take care and until next time, happy gaming.